Picking up a grain of rice requires a lot of hand stability. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Alright, so when I was in med school looking for ways to get better at surgery, um, some of the most common advice I got was to get kits like this. Typically these kits come with a silicone pad, a needle driver that probably comes from a lab repair kit that's a one-time use, and a forcep that's useful for grabbing skin. Frankly, these tools discouraged me from practicing because they were uncomfortable. The needle driver is small, doesn't fit well in your hand, and it's very stiff, so every time you open and close it, it hurts your fingers. The forceps are really small and poor quality, so it's not good at picking things up. And the silicone pad, it just gets dirty very easily, and there's a lot of resistance when you drive needles through. So over time, you get fed up with how tedious it is to drive needles through and to clean it up after each time you use it. We'll talk about what kind of things can encourage good practice at home, and what tools and tricks that we picked up on the way that, that can make it actually really enjoyable. One essential thing to mention is that when you're practicing at home, your body position should simulate the real thing as much as possible. So your body position should be as close to what you want it to be in the OR. So find a space where you're not sitting down, where you're standing up with a table about waist height so that your body's not tense, you're standing there with good posture, but you're not slouched over and your arms are comfortably resting at your sides at about 90 degree angle. So now let's get into some of the equipments that we use, starting out with the needle driver. So as I showed you before, this is the one that comes in the kit. I wouldn't recommend it for practicing because it's stiff, causes you to strain over time. And also it's a size that doesn't necessarily translate to most operations unless you're just sewing on the skin. So what we use is something like this. You can typically get them for free if you ask OR staff for instruments that are expired or they're throwing out. It's called a Surratt needle driver. It's about six and a half to seven inches. Um, it's actually very easy to use, light in your hands, and this is something that you can practice at home over time. And also for forceps, instead of using just a short one that comes in the kit, typically used for lac repairs or sewing skin in DED, I would prefer to use something that's a little bit longer because you do want to get used to holding something that can pick up and handle needle at a distance. Obviously, it doesn't have to be excessively long. You always want to use instruments that are only long enough to be able to reach what you're trying to operate on and no longer because it adds unnecessary instability. But something like this, a regular pair of the Bakey forceps are standard. So when we realized that we didn't want to use a silicone pad anymore and it was expensive to replace them, we decided to look for an alternative. We specifically went to places like hardware stores and Home Depot to try to figure out what we could buy in bulk and wasn't gonna break our bank when we try to practice surgery at home. So we eventually settled on something like this. And it doesn't have to look like this when you make your own. This is just something that we thought captured all the needle angles that we wanted to work on. So it's just a wooden board with nails that are built into it so that it functions kind of like pegs on a pegboard with different shapes. The first material that I used was a rubber band. We put it across nails in different shapes, and then I tried passing needles through them. The advantage was that they were highly durable. They could be stretched into any shape I wanted them to be. And every time I was done suturing with them, instead of trying to think about how to pull all that suture out of a silicone pad, I could just take it off the board and throw it out. Eventually, I thought that the rubber band wasn't quite the texture that I was looking for. And then one day we came across using a hair tie. A hair tie is also really cheap and can be bought in bulk has the same stretchable characteristics, has a nice soft texture that you're looking for, passes needle through it really, really nicely. In fact, resembles some of the textures and characteristics of sewing cuffs that we use in cardiac surgery. So we bought hair ties and began to use them in our exercises so that they could give you any kind of orientation, whether it's parallel to you, perpendicular to you, or you could put it into shapes such as squares, which can resemble annular suturing orientations. There's different types of sutures. Some of them are monofilament, meaning there's only one string, and therefore it's shiny when you look at it, and it has some memory, kind of like a fishing line. And these are prolines and nylons. And some of them are polyfilament, which means everything's braided together. These tend to have a little more friction on them. These are like silk or vicro sutures. Um, so it doesn't really matter when you're practicing, whether you're practicing with a silk suture or a proline suture, you just want something durable. In this case, you just want to make sure that it's not a pop-off needle, meaning that in the OR, sometimes they're designed to throw a suture and just pop the needle off the rest of the body. In this case, you want to make sure that they stay together. 
Now that we talked about some of the most essential things that you need for practicing, we also want to share a lot of other tips and tricks we picked up along the way. Some of them are highly unconventional but really effective. And we only thought about them because we were having conversations with people in areas that were not strictly related to surgery. So for example, coloring books. Sometimes we're not used to using our non-dominant hand for things like bovies and forceps, but using a coloring book with your non-dominant hand can make them a lot more dexterous. Another realization that we came across is that in order to have good surgical dexterity and to reduce your tremors in the OR, you actually need good hand-related fitness too because your wrists are gonna be placed in positions that they're not used to, and you're gonna be using instruments that can tire out your hand over time. If you've ever noticed, after holding pressure on something or exhausting your hands while doing something, they shake for a while. Similar phenomenon happens in surgery. So we use things that help us uh, strengthen our extensors, as well as our flexors, um, and we've come up with more creative ways of strengthening our hands over time. Similar to using a coloring book, which is not directly related to surgery, but helps you improve your dexterity, you don't have to necessarily just pick up tissue with your forceps. So for example, we use rice as a good substitute for practicing your dexterity and transfer skills. Picking up a grain of rice requires a lot of hand stability. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. You need to be able to pick up something that's irregularly shaped and then make sure that you're holding it in a way that doesn't pop out of your forceps. So we use this board to transfer rice pebbles from one location to another, which forces you to change your forcep angles as you're picking up very difficult objects. In addition to the needle driver we showed you earlier, you may be interested in learning how to use a Castro somewhere down the line. This is used for fine vascular anastomosis, where you're going to be mostly dealing with very fine sutures and needles. For some of you, you might be interested in learning how to sew in a hole. A lot of operations don't happen at the level of the skin, it happens deep inside the body. So in order to simulate depth, we simply just use a shoebox with a cutout that, for in our case, resembles a sternotomy used in cardiac surgery. So it forces you to be comfortable with needle angles and instrument angles that you would not normally use if the board were just sitting on the surface. This is what it looks like this inside. We installed a light so that you would not be limited in terms of visibility even when you're sewing inside the box. Similar to how musicians can use a metronome to keep track of tempo during their songs, we can also use a metronome to keep track of our progress as you become faster and more facile sewers. What we can do is break up the sewing into a cadence and use a metronome to make sure that we're getting more efficient each time. In the future, we're gonna be coming out with more tips and drills, educational and lifestyle content that highlights what it means to be a modern surgeon. So join our movement today and subscribe to our channel. Needle driver? Somewhere down the Rhine. <laughs> Rhine road? Somewhere down the Rhine. Rhine, yeah. Rhine river. <laughs> Picking up a grain of rice requires a lot of hand stability. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>